Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me and the boy back outside at last. We've finished our at home quarantine period, what with having traveled from abroad and all that. And we are allowed out in the fresh air again, which is great. Um, here in Wales, we're still restricted. Uh, we can't drive anywhere yet. We still um, can only go where we can walk to, but thankfully my house is just over there. Uh, so I can walk over here to Lion Rock, no problem. Or you can go on your bike and stuff as well. It's all good. Um, apologies if the light goes a bit funny. One minute it's bright, the next minute it looks like it's going to rain and it's flipping windy, but hopefully the microphone's sheltered enough down there. Today's video is something I've done similar videos to before, but I thought I'd sort of focus in a bit more on this one about the kit you need for sort of your first trad leads. So it, like the minimal amount of kit, because I'm aware that I certainly was, and I expect a lot of you are, on a bit of a budget when you're buying that first set of kit. And it's, it's expensive, isn't it? There's a lot of kit to buy. Um, so I thought I'd go through the minimal amount of kit, which probably means it's going to be for single pitch climbing, right? I'm going to do a second part of this one in the not too distant future, which is sort of the bits you add to go on to multi pitch climb. So imagine for this one, we're going to, I don't know, round here, maybe Hollyhead Mountain, Upper Tier of Traumatic, or perhaps you're in the Peak District, climbing at Stanage, those kind of places, and, you know, a thousand other single pitch crags. Apologies if there's any noise from jets, there's some uh, big F-15s flinging around there well loud. Um, but I'll crack straight on. It's not just about the wrap, but that's the focus of it. But the other bits, First off, a helmet. I'm not going to go through brands and stuff, but you're worth it. Wear a helmet. Shoes. You'll need some rock shoes, some comfy rock shoes. I'm not going to go into too much detail. This pair, you can see, still have the tags on a pair of Evolve rock shoes. These are 55 quid in outside at the moment, which seems like a bargain if they're as good as I think they're going to be. But I'm going to do a review of these soon on a, on a cool route, I hope. So I've got quite a good video planned for that one. Um, on that note, I am happy to announce that we are now supported by Outside. You might have seen on my uh, Instagram and uh, other social media that uh, we've we've teamed up, which is really great. I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I'll put some links to all this kit, and uh, funnily enough, there'll be links to Outside as well. But a flipping great shop. If you ever get the chance to pop in or browse online, go for it. Next up, rope. I'm going to recommend a 50 metre rope because I'm talking about trad stuff. So a 50 metre rope, somewhere between nine and a half and 10 millimetres, right? That's the sort of balance between not too skinny it will wear out, but not too fat that they're sort of hard to handle. If you have got sport aspirations, it might be worth going longer. Um, but saying that 50 metres, that gets you up the majority of sport in the UK. If you're going abroad and stuff, that's a different video, to be honest. But uh, get a good brand, a, a mammoth type brand, uh, Edelrid, uh, there's all stuff. There's all sorts of good brands, but uh, Mammoth uh, often do some bargain ones, which is what that one is. Next up, chalk bag. You've got to have a chalk bag with some chalk in it. Do you need them for the really easy routes? No, but uh, you know, it's nice to have, isn't it? Especially if you get to a slightly damp hold or something, or just it's a like little comfort blanket sometimes, dipping into the chalk, taking a deep breath, that kind of thing. So a chalk bag with some chalk in it. Uh, I, when I first started climbing, I looked at people, I was like, why is everyone carrying a toothbrush on every route? I thought it was some like alpine training thing where you've got to have a toothbrush ready in case you get benighted or something. It's just for brushing holds. You won't need them on those easier routes, but if you start to climb a bit harder, sometimes you'll want to clean a hold to get maximum sort of grip onto it. Harness, um, oh, there's all sorts. It's just comfy and with some gear loops on it. There's so many good harnesses out there these days. Uh, Lowe's, this one's a black diamond solution. I really like it. I'm gonna have another harness to test soon from a company called Blue Ice, which will be really cool. So watch this space for a review on that, but uh, that works for me. Right, onto the bulk of the video now, which is sort of the focus of it. Get these out of the way first. Right, cams. I'm gonna say you don't need to get cams on that first trad rack. There's exceptions to this. This is a UK centric video because that's where I'm based. If you're, let's say in the States somewhere and your local crag is just crack after crack, which are all parallel sided uh, and won't take nuts and stuff, well, you're gonna need some cams, aren't you? So there's exceptions to all these rules, right? But I think let's just sack them off to start with. I think they're flipping nice to have and as you progress, you'll definitely want to buy some, but they are loads of money. And I'm talking about being a bit budget conscious on this video. And you know, I think they retail, you normally can pick them up for sort of 325-ish pounds for that set without the snappers. 
So it is a lot of money and you will want them, but I don't think you need them straight away. By focusing on other stuff, such as, uh, where are they? Nuts and hexes that I'll come on to. I think you learn like the bread and butter of good placements. So you start to just build up some good judgment. And on those diffs and V diffs, think about when they were first climbed, uh, you know, probably early 1900s and stuff like that. They wouldn't have had any kit, let alone nuts. So obviously they wouldn't have had sticky rock shoes and were happy to use them. So, you know, it's a funny point, but you know, I just don't think you need them. You will want them eventually though. Nuts, right. I start with a set of 1 to 11. These are DMM Walnuts, they're my favourite. Other brands, of course, are available. One being that tiny one, green being number 11. Spread over two snap gates, DMM Phantoms for me. You'll want more nuts at some point as well. For that, for those first leads, that's plenty. At some point, you'll have placed a number five, come up to another crack and go, oh, that's a number five as well. Okay, well, that helps to build some judgment, doesn't it? What else could you use in that same crack? If nothing will go in, you're on a diff or a V diff, there's probably another good placement really close by. But you know, if you haven't got a number five, could you place a number four sideways or flat, uh, for example? gets you thinking and building some experience and stuff. So I think it's really good, just one to 11 to start off with. What is really confidence inspiring, and you will hear jingle jangling away if you walk along the top or bottom of Stanage on any given day, are uh, hexes. I'm trying to stop them jingle jangling because the microphone will pick it up loads otherwise. Uh, a, a set of DMM talk nuts for me, starting at the green one through to the blue one, set of four. Uh, they're just big lumps of metal and that's great for your head, isn't it, when you slot one of those in. And on those discs and V-diffs, there's a lot of big cracks and stuff, so you can place them, can't you? Really confidence inspiring. Four of them split over for me, two crabs worth, two on either side. Next up, some quick draws. Let's put those down for a second. Two longer drawers, sling drawers I call them, 60 centimetre slings. Uh, some shops sell them, I'm sure outside sell them like that. Um, other shops you have to buy the bits separately for these sling drawer ones, but two of them for me. And then four slightly, um, they're dangly quick drawers. These are 25 centimetre ones. This is great because it stops you getting rope drag and lifting bits of kit out and stuff like that um, when you don't need such a long one. So four of them, again, DMM Phantoms for me. And then, Two slightly shorter ones. Why bother with shorter ones? Just nice for the head sometimes. You know, does that make any difference in a fall? Not really, but if it helps you psychologically, great. So a couple of those, you could say it saves you a tiny bit of weight, but I'm not sure that's relevant. So what you've ended up with there, eight quick draws. And I think that's enough for a normal single pitch. Exceptions, of course. Next up, similar theme, some slings. I carry two 120 centimeter slings on a screw gate each uh, for, for that sort of starter starting out kind of thing. You might change them to snap gates in due course when you're beginning. Uh, if in doubt, put a screw gate on it when you're building a belay and stuff like that. So two of them with two uh, DMM lockers on there as well. Can't remember what they're called, those lockers. And then one nice long 240 centimeter sling and that's just got a snap gate on it just out of habit for me. You could equally have a screw gate on it. Great for putting around big boulders, linking a few bits of kit, putting around a big tree, all those sorts of things. I really like that. Not many routes I climb without the 240. And then the other bits and pieces. Nut key on a snap gate. Uh, I've got a bit of prusik on that to create a lanyard. Some nut keys come with lanyards on them as well. You want to get all your kit back so you and your second to have one of them. Uh, or you can swap, but I just find I forget to swap. Prusiks. Two prusiks on a snap gate. Um, as with all these things, right, you've got to know what to do with them. Is there any point carrying prusiks if you don't know how to use them? No, so learn how to use them first. Uh, yeah, some great videos online, but equally some time out with an experienced person or instructor or guide. Yeah, worth its weight in gold. Obviously, I'm massively biased on that, but uh, you want to know how to use all this kit properly and know you're doing it right. It's great for the confidence. If you've got someone there to say, yeah, that is a number five out of five placement. It's really solid. Or, you know, what do you think about that? And you say, oh, I think that's about a two. What are you on about? That's easily a four. You know, you get the idea. Great to have some quality feedback. And then uh, a belay plate knowing how to use it of course uh, for me I like these DM uh, sorry not DMM these are black diamond these ones uh, ATC guide DMM do a version as do many other people with a screw gate on it uh, it's got two holes in case you want to progress onto half ropes which you probably will at some point and then for me three spare screw gates a big fat boa uh, a slightly smaller but still quite wide DMM Phantom HMS and then whatever you oh this is just a Phantom D that one so three spare ones for building your belays and all that kind of jazz 
there you go i hope that was of interest please do fire away with any questions as always got to know how to use it so if in doubt seek some instruction you know the score on that front um, me and the boy are going to go and warm our hands up because it's freezing out here he's growling at people because he can see some people over there as always please do fire away with any questions i'm happy to answer as best i can you know the score on that one uh it massively helps if you click that like smash the subscribe find us on insta find us on facebook all those things i ask every time it's massively appreciated and massively helpful as i said fire away with those questions but i hope you've enjoyed this video again more videos coming up very soon.